The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IA exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMD's Alpha Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is brought to you by NetWealth, market-leading providers of technology, excellent customer support and expertise to help your wealth business thrive. Rated number one for overall satisfaction and value for money by Investment Trends and Chant West's Advised Product of the Year for the last four years, NetWealth is here to support you on your advice technology journey. See wealth differently and visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today to deep dive into the Work Sorted app has a graphic design past along with time in business development for a platform and an insurer and works with innovators to turn their ideas into commercial reality. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Simon Batchley. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Not at all. You're very welcome. Now, I'm very keen to dive into all things work sorted. Uh, yes. There's clearly a lot to dive into, I might add. Yeah. Um, but before we do, let's just sort of get to know you a little better through your own technology use. So, Cool. What is your most used emoji? Do you even use emojis? Oh, I, I do. I, I get told off for using exclamation marks in text messages and emails too much. But um, I think my most used emoji is going to be, you know, that silly face where it's kind of, you know, one eye up, one eye down, winking, but silly <laughs> smile with the tongue out. I think that's kind of me. Um, for those that, that know me, you know, I can't, I can't stay too serious for too long. Um, nice. So I reckon I like that's it. probably my, my most used one for sure. I like it. You haven't gone as far as using like the red exclamation point emoji itself. You're just no, in the text. No, no, okay. just the Because that's quite aggressive, yeah, that one, ones, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> and how about if you had to, you know, delete all the apps off your phone and you just got to keep three, which yeah. three would you keep? Well, you, you headline this with me having a graphic design background. So it may be no surprise that Instagram is one of my more favorite apps. I, I follow a lot of artists and the likes. So I'm a very visual person. So Instagram for me um, is sort of one of my, I guess, favorite social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't live without the reminders app. Um, I love that <laughs> because I'm constantly thinking of things. Things will pop up and I don't want to forget them. So I'll just jot them down. It means I can move on with my day, but I'm never going to miss anything. Um, and I got a new app not long ago. I was testing it out for my kids. It's called Impulse. And it's just oh. one of those um, apps you use to test your memory and to keep your brain functioning. You know, it's, it's some good little um, puzzles and trips and traps on that one. So I tested it out for the kids, but I found myself um, using that one almost daily to just sort of jog the brain. And, and yeah, like I said, test your memory, test your, your uh, problem solving skills. It's a bit of fun. Oh, I love it. I always love yeah. a new app. So I've written yeah. that one down. I'll check it out. Although it does sound like one of those ones that might be dangerous in that then, you know, I'm diving into that more than I should, but I'll definitely yeah. check it yeah. out. It does get a you bit know. addictive. <laughs> right. I, and I'm one of those people. I'm like, oh yeah. no, three hours yeah. have gone. No. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into Work Sorted. Yeah. Let's sort of go a bit abroad initially. Help me get a sense of where it sort of sits in the whole advice tech space. You know, what category yeah. does it generally fall under? Who is who is it lined up against? That sort of yep. thing. Yeah. So um, we're a bit of a fun one, I guess. Um, you know, we 
are uh, what we refer to, I guess, as a financial services specific CRM. So that's really the core right. of our product and, and what we have a reputation for. We were uh, very lucky to win an award for uh, best overall CRM in the um, advisor ratings landscape report, the most recent one, which was, which was wonderful. Um, but we also have a strength in revenue management. Um, okay. We consider ourselves, um, a, for better word, a practice management solution. I guess um, our view on the world, world and our angle is um, is that we, you know, we fundamentally believe in the value of advice and we know that great, efficient, effective businesses are able to provide better advice and more advice to clients. Yeah. Um, we are not power planners. We don't have a power planning background. We have business background. And so our view is that we want to help uh, advisors run the best possible business that they can so that they can go and do the stuff that they're so great at, which is servicing more clients. Yeah. So we're a very business-centric tool rather than a power planning tool. And it's um, interestingly, one of the, the first definitions or distinctions that we give when people come and look at Work Sorted is, um, what are you? Well, we, we start with what we're not, and we're not a power planning tool. Yeah. We're everything else though. So we fit in to that category of, you know, uh, operational efficiency. We are, you know, uh, helping clients uh, capture their client information, run their businesses through workflows and process automations, um, have reporting and insights into their revenue and productivity and profitability and cost to serve, all those kind of fun things um, that businesses are really interested in knowing about their, their operational side. And we leave, yeah. um, you know, the, the power planning tools to the experts in the market that are, that are power planning tools. And it's an interesting approach because there's a lot more specific um, para planning or para planning, you know, yeah. tangential yeah. tools out there now. You That's know, right. just off the top of my head, you know, product recs and others that, yeah. that are fitting this need. And so, you know, we don't need every system to do everything. No, yeah, that's we've, right. We've got more it, options, don't we? Yeah, and I think, you know, without going into the full history of it, that seems to be, you know, there, there's still a prevalence of all-in-one solutions and that, that mm -hmm. makes no surprise. They're big businesses. They can, you know, they can provide great tools, but they can't be great at everything. And, and you yeah. know, we've kept our scope very narrow. We've gone deep and rich into our capabilities uh, around that business efficiency. Um, and it's played well into our favour. And certainly we know that businesses, especially with all of the compliance hurdles that they've had to jump through and, and the layers upon layers upon layers that keep on coming, having a tool that can help them genuinely drive and make you know uh, efficient, effective changes to the way they operate um, just saves them having to repeat all of those little redundant things, really bring back the time that they want to do the things that they're really good at. And that's what we get excited about in businesses. If we can get advisors out doing what they love and enjoy doing and take all that mundane, monotonous stuff away and, you know, and drive that through automation and, and through our product, uh, then it's a good day. Yeah, absolutely. And I, so then, okay, let's talk through then primary users. So yeah. then it's still team members in the practice. So yeah. clearly, you know, advisor right through to uh, admin and people like that. I'm yes. expecting. Okay, yeah, so so business, you would seek this yeah. across the whole business. It's not the yeah. sort of thing that you'd see one person in the operation having. If you're using it, everybody's using it. Is that fair? That's right. Yeah, look, okay. it works best when everyone's got their hands involved because it does become that day-to-day -day workbench for your activity and your client information and, and for a lot of your client communication too. So your emails, text messages, documents that you create, file notes, all of that kind of stuff um, happens in work sorted. So, okay. um, you know, we do see the whole business, but it's also interesting that um, the, the, the level of users has expanded with the change in the way businesses operate. So um, outsourced power planners, mm -hmm. outsourced administration staff. Um, but by the way we uh, structure and, and uh, license our product, we don't have limitations on a per user basis. So we offer yep. a single solution, unlimited users, all functionality, which opens up this uh, opportunity to say, well, I have a really good, strong relationship with my referral source or with the accountant in my office, you know, and I, I happen to do mortgage broking as well. Why can't we all use the system? Yeah. You know? um, even to the extent that we've seen firms that say, well, my compliance officer or my external auditor is given permission to have access to my system, albeit right. very limited and controlled, but why can't they log in and get the file notes and see what they want to see? And then they don't have to disrupt me. So it, it just... Yeah. It's broadened the opportunities with how you engage with your community of, of connections yep. um, and taken away that limitation around, oh, well, it's going to cost me an extra how much to have another license and and all those sorts of things. You know, when you're looking at tools like that, I that sort of the other sort of pricing that's either user linked to your numbers of users or yeah. amount of use, you know, yes. one of those two things. Yeah. Yep. I, and I offer, as you can imagine, when I'm doing this sort of stuff, I get asked about new apps coming out and things like that, and they ask for my feedback. And that's the two things I give feedback on. Do yeah. not price it this way, please, because yeah. all of us then hold back. 
Yeah, we, that's we, right. we don't use it as much. We don't give it to every member of the team. I mean, right through to the receptionist should have these things because Correct. everybody can have an input. Everybody, if there's some tasks, they can tidy up. They can, yeah. you know, provide some support to other team members. Like all of that only happens exactly. when yeah. it's across the board. And when you and don't you, care, you're like, that's good. Just give you yeah. access, you know. And you need that digital footprint, right? You know, we work yeah. in a very heavily compliant related environment. So knowing that it was Betty, not Bob, that was doing those things and, you know, giving yep. certain people permission to do certain things is really important in business too. And so, yeah, look, it, it's a joy for us because it means that, you know, businesses can grow. They can ebb and flow. If they've got a temp that's on for a bit, they can, you know, introduce that user to our system and not be concerned about that, that bottom line cost. Um, but also then, you know, the all functionality gives them that opportunity to start with us around a very, typically our clients will come with a, a particular problem that they want to solve first. Mm-hmm. But uh, because it, by virtue of building our system as one from day one, um, it means that it's all heavily integrated. You know, if, you, right. if you're using our system for revenue, you'll find revenue sits at the client level or, and it, you can attach it to activity. And so people are encouraged to use more of our system over time because they go, well, what does that do? How can I use that more? And they're just going to get more benefit, right? You know, if they, we say to our clients, you know, if you see the value in our product at day one, God, you wait until you're at day 10, 20, 50, 100, you know, and whatever, because you're going to be using even more of the system and getting even more value. And, you know, it doesn't matter that it's a, it's a fixed price system. Yeah. Okay. And so in that sense, then are there types of practices you see that really manage to, to get rolling? Whereas there's others that struggle, even a style or a size that works sort of just works really well for. Yeah, look, we, um, so we, our sort of, our typical client is a financial planning firm, um, integrated or not, but typically, uh, sort of predominantly financial planning. Um, yep. you know, we do have many firms that have got accounting, mortgage broking and the likes in them too. Um, but the typical is financial planning firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tend to be between two and 20 advisors. Um, but again, we've got, um, others at either end of that spectrum too. Um, self-licensed businesses, again, they tend to make their own software decisions. And so, <laughs> yeah. um, it is, you know, less sort of hoops to jump through. Um, but we do work with a number of licensees that are quite practical and pragmatic about having more open software usage. Um, we yep. do have some that mandate our product. We have some that endorse our product, but um, we prefer to be with the firms that want to use us. So um, they're the types of independent um, decision makers that we're looking for. As for then, you know, um, the, the cream of the crop or the ones that really seem to drive our system best, they have someone in their business that will be that driver. So okay. it, it may be they may be fortunate enough to have a practice manager or operations manager in their business, uh, but sometimes that responsibility by virtue of this, the business not being huge um, rests with one of the administration staff or potentially yep. an advisor or a power planner. Um, but having someone that's going to own it and drive it makes all the difference with these things. And I think that happens with, it, with any piece of software, right? Um, I agree. But we certainly see the value, you know, they um, if they do have that practice management lens on their, you know, on their uh, job role, um, then they get work sorted and they can see how much potential they've got to really um, hone their business, right, and, and just drive yeah. a better service delivery. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, there's an interesting lesson in that that's – have a guru for the big systems you use. You know, there's going to be a, yeah. a handful that are the chunky ones. Um, yep. Just have a guru in the office. It's the person yeah. that's across it. They they watch all the newsletters. They you know they <laughs> constantly right. interacting with the provider. You know, like let yeah. them and and you'll be stunned how often that isn't a senior person. You know, there'll right. be just yeah. somebody in the business that gets it, you know, then they just, I mean, for this one, it sounds like, you know, boxes and arrows, numbers, you know, somebody that just can seal that value and yeah. so can own that. And then in a team yeah. meeting when somebody's talking about either a new process or something that I do can be hands up, oh, we could probably do that in work sorted. That's you know? right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the product suite does sort of uh, lend, lend itself to there being, well, interested parties at all sort of spectrums, I guess, you know, um, CSOs, admin staff and the like love the efficiency they get out of workflow and, and client yep. communications. Advisors obviously love the revenue, right? So they want to have a look at the numbers, practice owners as well. Um, yep. And then the practice uh, managers sort of sit in between going, right, well, if I can see what it costs us to do all the things we do, I can see what revenue we're generating. I can start doing cool profitability and productivity and all that kind of stuff in there yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. Before, if somebody's sort of curious about the tool, is there anything you'd suggest they do before sort of embarking on work sorted? Yeah. Is there some stuff they can clean up or anything they can sort of get sorted oh, look, beforehand? We um, we always go through, you know, um, transitioning data is always a big consideration for businesses. And I think mm. um, I think it's potentially uh, a, a they perceive it to be a bigger job than it actually is. Um, we do a lot of handholding and a lot of help with sort of transitioning data, but it's um, it for us is one of those. I think that the the, um, the thought process that you go through is: Am I comfortable leaving my all in one, or am I already in a position um, where I'm comfortable to do that? Um, because you are, if you're splitting up your technology, and yeah. 
um, you know, you got to make sure that by doing so that you are going to still drive efficiency, right? Yep. It's got to be a better outcome. And uh, in a lot of cases, of course, it is. Um, we're seeing that trend now through the marketplace. It's, I think, we're over that sort of hurdle now. Everyone can see the value in, in, in starting to split up your systems for the right reasons. But mm-hmm. um, with with doing so and making that decision, it's right, well, what am I going to use for all the pieces of my process? Right? Right. And for the for the most part, um, our clients seem to retain, they, they tend to be coming from an all-in-one solution. Um, they like it for, for power planning. So they will stick right. with it for their power planning solution. So that, that won't change. So there's a constant there which reduces the complete disruption to their business. What they are doing, though, is they're now changing in our world, obviously, their CRM. Uh, yeah. And that that can, again, feel a bit concerning for them. But we, we wrap a nice strong process around that to make sure that it happens smoothly and quickly and that all their data gets across. And we do do a lot of data cleansing along the way. It's sort of it's inherent in what we do, but it's a, it's a great exercise for firms to go through because what they then get, and, you know, as, as nerdy as it sounds, is nothing better than a fresh set of data, right? And you've just yeah. got all your client names clean, all of your addresses, you got rid of all of the archive, you know, all of that sort of stuff is sort of all tidied up. Uh, and away you go. You can, you know, get back into doing your processes and, and and driving that efficiency. So, yeah, it is a consideration and we certainly talk through when we talk to any prospective clients, you know, what are you coming from? How do you want to set it up? And what's what's going to fit in all the, you know, the pieces of the puzzle? Don't have to have it all solved straight away. Uh, but it's important that we, especially because we're not everything to everyone, that we can show them what else we connect with uh, and how we can help them solve that. If you like, I hate the word, but end-to-end solution, right? You know, yeah. just, it's, it's, it's making sure that we fill all the gaps or at least point them in the right direction where we're not, going to be the person solving it for them. Yeah. And yeah. look, it is a transition like that when it is one of those core. So, yeah. cause really what you, what you guys, I mean, it's got a revenue focus, but CRM and CRMs yes. are in the middle, aren't they? Even though it's, right. I think in advice, we think our power planning tools are, it's like, no, 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 the CRM is the center because that's yeah. where the client lives. Right. So, that's right. so when you're doing that, I think, um, I think in our heads and, and years ago, we would have thought this too, where, right, okay, up to this date, it's one system. And then the yeah. day after it's the yeah. next one, it's like, there is no hope no. in hell you're going to pull it off. Like, it's <laughs> just, right. we've tried yeah. and it is yeah. not possible. You know, we so I think yeah. the layers, it's the layers of, right, from this date, those yeah. two people are going to start doing a revenue thing with the new system. And then yeah. they're going to, you know, yeah. so it's transitioning into that, you know, cleverly. That's right. Yeah, and um, that's where it comes back to, you know, I said we they typically come to us with a particular problem that they want to solve. Right. So we solve so that one first, focus right? On that it's, first. It's, yeah, it's very easy to get distracted with all the other cool things you can do in work sorted. <laughs> yeah. Then we, we want them to use everything. That's great. Yeah. But let's solve the first problem first. You know, we're working with firms at the moment that are uh, moving from a software that's no longer continuing. So first and foremost, get your client data in and start getting file notes in. You know, the rest yeah. will come and we can we can absolutely transition. So yeah. thankfully for us, twelve years of experience doing this, you know, this is in our first radio so we've we've got a nice robust process around that we can help them get across uh, and it is interesting you know once they do come across um, what that opens up as far as opportunities to test and try other systems because you're right we, we do sort of sit as the bedrock but once you've got that settled down um, picking and choosing other advice tools becomes really easy right because yeah. you don't have to move your whole business anymore right it's no. you've got that foundation set up so if you want to test and play with some of those other peripheral tools it does actually become quite easy to do Right. And I do think, yeah. you know, I mean, years ago, some years ago, we um, went self-licensed ourselves and there was a lot yes. of reasons for that. But the one reason that was quite strong for us, but would be a, a certainty now is the system's choice. Yeah. I mean, we've always in our business always been tech focus because we yeah. needed to be um, well ahead of time just because it was the way it was. Um, but I think, you know, the way we were approaching it then is how most practices are now, like the inability to choose tools that suit yourself, yes. your clients, your yeah. niche, your, like yeah. it makes such a difference. Um, yeah. And you don't realize how hard something is until you then go somewhere else and you're like, oh my, yeah. We we just pressed that button and that just happened, you know. It just happened, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. The joy of that is amazing. Yeah. And now speaking of which, you've just made me think of a topical um little uh form or, or process that I'd be curious <laughs> about your viewing on and maybe any oh, yeah. progress you guys are making. So consent. Oh yes. Um the blessed product provider <laughs> form, right? So yes. uh, we all know that consent's there and it's fine and we get our clients to sign off. Yeah. The challenge is the double of it yes. all. Um, yes. Have you guys heard of or have made any progress in discussions with getting providers just to, to just accept either one form we all agree yeah. on or our yeah. internal forms or what's your view on all of that? 
Yes. Yeah, so um, when when annual advice agreements became the new thing, and we had one licensee that jumped on it about twelve months before it was really enforced for anybody else, we uh, took the chance uh, to or took the opportunity to build out, as we had done previously for FDS and Optin, a full management process in software to handle them. So. Yeah. All of the fields, all the widgets, all the alerts, all of the bits and pieces, you know, a whole, you know, end to end, you can't break it, you know, it will, it will help you through the entire process. And one of those uh, challenging pieces was, of course, the consent document. Now we mm. produce capability to, uh, to, to create a consent form based on ASIC's sort of default. They yep. had a, a template. They did. Yeah. Um, a, and we know that that suited. Which was pretty some, clear, to be fair. Yeah, like it was yeah. quite. It wasn't so bad, yeah. That's right. So we so we built the capability around that one. But the question mark really did loom then, well, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle all the others? Because they all decided, uh, unfortunately, to pick a different path. Um, <laughs> so, look, it, it transpired the way it transpired, which has been a, a pain for advice firms because whilst all of our functionality around producing, you know, your fixed term agreements or your ongoing agreements, out of work sort of is seamless and lovely and wonderful, then there's this stumbling block with, hang on, well, what about the consent? Oh, well, you know, one one do it this way, one do it this way. I can use yeah. your generic one for, for the others. And it's just, it became really, really clunky. So I'm absolutely advocating for a single sort of uh, template for those things um, because I already have a stack of development initiatives that will help to streamline that process yeah. phenomenally. Um, you know, we already have... Again, that ability to track consent due dates and all those sorts of things in our system. We produce the OFAs and the AFAs and all the bits that go with it. Mm. Um, but there is, uh, without giving away too many of my secrets, we do have a very uh, good idea around not only we can issue them right now and digitally sign them and all those wonderful things, mm. but then the return of those and then the issuing to the product providers is something that we've got some really cool ideas around. So. Yeah. All I need is a standard form, and then right. we will we will go on for that one. So, yeah, and I, I think, think that- I think the mistake, and and I don't put this on anybody in particular. Really, we were all reacting. I mean, that's yeah. what happened here, right? We all reacted yeah. to something that was a requirement. Was yeah. instead of approaching it as more like, well, how are everybody going to approach contributions, mm. which is got to be acceptable across all and got to be right? Yes. We looked at it as a as something that was an individual thing per practice, yeah. and yeah. and it was a fundamental mistake. Yeah. Um, it yeah. needs to be like a notice of intent form. Like it just needs yeah. to be this. Everybody's the same. We yeah. all, you know, um, or at the very least. All of the fields are the same the way we state it. I mean, and I'm okay with the provider saying, well, it's, you know, you've got to say our uh, account number's got to be this way and it's got to have this many digits. All of that's fine. Sure. Yeah. You know, all that's Those fine. Those nuances we can handle. A hundred percent. But yeah. the need to double up and, and some of them handle the dates differently and like, yes. like oh. Yeah. 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 We, we, um, I feel like for the past, probably, yeah, I mean, even the past eighteen months, I feel like there's a good half of our practice where it's just yes. been dealing with because the yeah. follow-ups alone, yeah. and this is for people yep. that want to do it. The clients want, like, it's not like they're resisting. Correct. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just a debacle. So, yeah. I'm with yeah. you there. We will. We, we need to pick at somebody. Um, yes. <laughs> get them all in the case. <laughs> all the XY members listening. Um, yeah. Let's start all talking about how we can just get this one simple thing sorted, uh, <laughs> because I think it'll make all our lives that much easier. Um, Absolutely. So let's talk a bit more about client facing stuff. Is there any, yeah. is the practice really designed internal? Is there any part of it that interacts with the client at all? Yeah, look, there's, there's tons. So I guess by virtue of it being that main platform that catches client activity, um, you then use our system for email, for SMS, for questionnaires, for fact finds. Um, we are in the process now of looking at um, a, a version, if you like, of a client portal. I've got to be careful of the terminology here because it's um, we are not building necessarily a full-fledged fact find, digital fact find like those that are in the marketplace. We yep. integrate with lots of those very good tools. But yeah. um, certainly um, it, it's a very topical uh, issue right now mm. with security, right? And so... Um, because we are that tool that is so heavily used between the advice firm and the client, uh, we do want to make sure that there is a more secure way of sharing uh, documents, right? Yep. We can we can use e-signatures and all those sorts of things, which is fine for those types of things. But when you've got, um, you know, large files that are Word documents, PDFs, you know, scanned images of things, you know, even um, giving, you know, um, IDs, you know, all of those sorts yep. of things that you need to provide um, to an advice firm, there's got to be a more secure way, a secure way of doing it. it needs to have yep. two-factor authentication and all those sorts of things. So, whilst we have a lot of um, great facilities for those things, another more secure way of doing this that is a little bit more modern than just using email um, is certainly where we're going to head. But yeah, mm. I mean, look, our our system is used heavily to engage with clients. Um, our 
process automation functionality allows you to automate a significant amount of that as well. So okay. anything from basic, you know, text messages to wish them a happy birthday through to, um, you know, review reminders and, and issuing documents to them, all those sorts of things. Uh, our system, you know, sees a lot of input and output um, with yeah. clients. Mm. And I'm seeing a lot more of that in the <laughs> the client portal sort of view is is mm. years ago it was always like let's just call it app you know a client app mm. um yes the focus was very much on data feeds yes <laughs> like it was oh but what the clients want to log in and see their balance i'm like yes yeah. but they can get that on the <laughs> other app yes. that the provider yeah. has yeah what they can't do as easily interact with us yeah and so yeah. Uh, for me i see you know the really great portals will just be that hub that place yes. where we interact that's right. Um, and, and cut yeah. through the noise of all the other channels we're trying to get to them on. Yeah. Um, that, but, you know, phone, SMS, email. So like, yeah. if you can, if that can be pun, become the home or the place or the virtual office, really. Um, That's right. And there, you know, the trick for, is, you know, um, you, you just, you're giving them another app prop possibly, right? And yeah. so, yeah, the trick is not to just sort of, you know, bombard them with lots and lots of apps. And so, this yeah. where, you know, we've got a pretty pragmatic view on it. There are, uh, front end client engagement tools out there. So I, I bundle into that, you know, um, the portals and the digital fact find solutions. And there's mm-hmm. been lots of new entrants as well as some, you know, good mature products in that space. Yep. Um, you know, we want to integrate with those really good tools yeah. so that we don't have to then add another one to the pile, so to speak. Um, that if they want to use, um, any of them, I won't go listing them all, but we, we all know who, who they are, mm-hmm. um, to, to submit client information, to submit documents and data and all those sorts of things. Well, then we want to integrate with those so that we can share them, obviously, into our system, where which is where they will normally end up residing anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and then obviously be able to push documents back. So we've been building some really cool uh, integration to, to share documents that you can produce in Work Sorted into those front-end tools as well. Um, yeah. Nonetheless, we will still sort of progress forward with having our own simple version of those yep. things because not everyone's using using those engagement tools nope. and it makes sense for us to have one as part of our suite. So they yeah. will, you know, similar to our digital fact find solution, it is good. You know, I'm not going to um, put it up there as the best, but yep. it's good and it certainly serves a purpose and it, and it um, definitely helps our clients out. And the client portal will be a really decent, slick, simple to use uh, client portal. Um, but yeah, we, um, we, we're not going to try and, you know, really uh, push in and create a brand new app and all those sorts of things. Yeah. As well. yeah. And that's the thing yeah. I think, um, you know, we we do need to stop looking for that one ring to will, rule them all sort yeah, of approach yeah, to systems because yeah. it doesn't work. No, it just doesn't. No. And then we can kid ourselves that it does, but it simply doesn't. Um, yeah. And the best analogy I, I heard for that was, um, you know, if we tried to pick, you know, the best house and the best car and the best, all these things and put it all together, it's the yeah. ugliest caravan you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't go fast and it's not yeah. actually particularly safe and it doesn't have a pool right. and it doesn't, you know, so yeah. we can't do that with our systems. So no, I like the right. idea of having a tool like this, CRM at the core, revenue feeding yeah. really well, and yeah. then, hey, trying out your portal. And then if you grow out of it, that's okay. Yeah. If yeah. you grow out of the yeah. portal, you can add yeah. on, you know, and as long as right. as integration is possible, then I think yeah. that's a powerful and quite sensible approach to some of those things, uh, easing yourself in. Yeah, and it is for us, you know, that is very much part of our remit. We, you know, we're comfortable not being everything to everyone, so it is important for us to integrate them with lots of other things. And yeah. you know, integration, you know, we could have a whole conversation on integration it's in itself. next on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it means a, a lot of things to, to different people. And, mm. and unfortunately, I think what it what it's perceived to be from an advisor's perspective and advice practices perspective and what it is sometimes sold as are two very different things. So yeah. that's, again, part of the questioning that, um, that I suggest advisors have when they're looking at software and you talk about integration. If you ask the question, oh, are you integrated with this? And they say, yes, ask how and how much, you know, mm-hmm. what are you sharing? How does it work? Because yes could mean as simple as, yeah, we, sh- we share three fields uh, yeah. of client data and that's not really that helpful, but nice to have maybe, but, you know, how, right. how valuable is that? So, you know, look, we have lots of integrations and, and some of them are very simple and some of them are, are very complex, but our focus now is less on the volume of them and more on the depth that we can build into them. So, okay. like, us, you know, we... We want to, and, and that plays into some other functionality that we're, that we're really strong in. Um, not only do we want to share client data and documents because it makes sense to do those things sure. to reduce rekeying and re-entry and, yep. and, and all the like. So it's good to have that data synchronization. 
Um, but where the fun stuff comes in is where we can um, automate uh, uh, actions uh, out of one system into mm-hmm. another. So this is this is the next level of integration and automation, if you like, that mm-hmm. we're seeing. And, um, you know, there are a small percentage of players that are using things like Zapier to already do that, right? You know, you can um, yeah. update a client information in, in one software and it will go and do five other things through Zap, yeah. through Zaps, right? Um, we're looking at exactly the same sort of thing through Work Sorted. So because we... As, as you said, and we agree, fit kind of in the middle. Yeah. Um, you would have front end kind of client engagement tools, digital fact find solutions, portals, all those sorts of things. Um, at the back end, we kind of put, you know, your advice production tools, all those sorts of things. So that's sort of um, a, the standard trifecta, if you like, of advice uh, relevant, uh, financial services relevant tools. But then you also have zeros and docu signs, mm. and you know you have um, Calendly's and all of these other products. You manage absolutely teams, right. All those what I refer to as industry agnostic tools that you use in your business too. And we can't be complacent; they are also just as valuable, just as heavily used. Yeah. Um, you know, tools that you use in your business. So we've got to make sure that we're connecting to those, which we do. Um, but then also allow those sort of uh, that chain, you know, domino effect, if you like, or that chain reaction of events when we do something simple in one system. So that's my head space now sits when we build an integration is, okay, let's make sure we've got data shared. That's, that's mm-hmm. you know, step number one. Now, what can we automate, right? Yeah. So when you do that, if a client enters their data in that front end portal, we want it to create the client, sure. Um, we want it to create a job for one of the CSOs. We want it to send a thank you email and have a link to the online calendar. And we want it to update in MailChimp. We want to do all of those things so that the user just doesn't have to do it because yeah. that's their standard process. And that's, yeah. I think that's where the real fun's going to be. I, I joke about it, you know, bringing the fun back to financial planning. We've got to do that, right? And, and yeah. tech can play a big part in that. And certainly, um, I completely agree with you because we, I think in the industry, we think that sort of data replication or, or, you know, reduction of double entry is where yes. the value is. And I don't think it is. I think that's like a 10% of a total 100% of automation yeah. value. It's, yeah. it seems like a lot because advisors feel like they do it a lot and therefore it becomes yeah. our pain. And therefore yeah. we make everybody else live our pain, right? So yeah. it yeah. seems like that's yeah. the case, but the repetition of, you know, setting a task for somebody else for moving over there and adding that thing in and ticking that box over here. And the, in admin, yeah. the amount of that yeah. going on is yeah. nuts. And yeah. that's where we've found value, to be honest. And, you know, a simple example, and it's, you know, it's using something like Zapier is, you know, we've historically, say, taken on a portfolio of clients um, yes. and that, you know, upload into a system generally, okay, great. That's, that's, you know, a task and hopefully your data's clean and the whole thing's mm. not too bad. Um, yeah. But we've managed to use Zapier to the, to actually trigger when that happens, it automatically sets up the client folders in Google Drive, one after the other, Brilliant. all templated, yeah. ready to go. So it's that stuff, yep. right? So now yeah. people go, oh, is that a big deal? Yeah, it really is. Like to yeah. have those things just yeah. done, done well, yeah. all yeah. clean. It's that sort Absolutely. of simple and mind numbing task. Yeah. You know, really, yeah. nobody loves doing that stuff. No, you know? <laughs> we used to see it um, even in our own system, you know, our workflow processes and one of the steps in the process is send the generic email, you know, welcome email to the client. And we just, well, hang on, let's just automate that entire step, right? So just yeah. press the button to complete it and it will automatically send that email to your client and it's already yeah. done, right? It saves yeah. the file note, client gets it, well, wonderful. <laughs> Correct. So, yeah, taking some of those things out. So instead of seeing the instruction to do it, the system just does it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. And, and what's powerful about those things is it frees up more time to actually interact with the client in in a more fluid way. Well, yeah, because I, I love think it on, you know, yeah, I love it on two accounts. It does. It frees up the time, but it also improves that engagement you have with your clients, like the experience that they have by getting these emails, getting that contact point. You know, sometimes it's a, a unnecessary, but the fact that you've just sent them an email that says we're at this stage, we've completed all these things, and when this is the next step in the process, you've yeah. kept them informed. They love hearing those sorts of things. Simple email, yeah. automated. You know, that's great. Yeah. Um, so we always look at you know our product development on those two lenses. If we're solving a problem for the advice firm and helping them sort of do what they do better, great. But if it's also then making them like a champion in front of their clients, even better. And and updates are powerful, aren't they? Because, yeah. you know, everybody fills a void with concern. Yeah. It's just who we yes. are. 
Um, yeah. So if you can just be giving them updates, I mean, it's why people love apps. Well, I mean, all of our deliveries now, we all get those updates. You know, even even right. some of your shopping, you can watch the, the truck on your on yes. your phone. <laughs> as it, now, yeah. do I need to watch the Harris Farm <laughs> truck as it delivers my food? No, but it makes me feel better, right? Yeah. It, and it gives yeah. me certainty and I'm not yeah. thinking, oh, they're going to forget or is it not, you know. Yeah. So I think, you know, that I agree with you. Some of that stuff that, you know, the minute a team member just completes a task and they're, they're yeah. off doing their thing, you know, they don't need to worry yeah. about interacting with the client. Oh, this has been done. We're one step further along. You know, it's that's yeah. powerful. Yeah. Um, and it's probably we don't think, do it quite enough in advice. No, and we can learn a lot. You know, again, I, I look outside of our industry for inspiration too. You know, mm. there's a lot to be inspired about in our industry, but I think from a tech perspective, we're, we're too far behind. So, you know, um, I don't I don't benchmark ourselves against what we do in our own industry. I, I benchmark ourselves against, you know, those, those global amazing pieces of technology that do have that level of engagement. You know, the way eBay communicate with you throughout the sales process and all those sorts of things you know that that's a high level of engagement that is really cool you know sometimes yeah. borderline obsessive uh, and over the <laughs> top but you know but it's still great you know like you just said at every step of the way i know exactly where things are at I, you know i know when my deliveries are coming when it's left here and to have that um, level of engagement i think just gives a, a comfort and trust right it, it builds that trust which is awesome and it is a bottom line item. I, I think it's something because once again, it's not necessarily coming to the advisor, but very few practices would be counting the inbound calls or emails they get because somebody's mm. wondering where something's at. But yeah. actually that yeah. can become quite a big portion where it's you reacting to somebody that's just following up on something that you're about to get to. You know, yes. like it's, yeah. it's that stuff. And so the more we can just sort of automate that checking in, they're not going to feel the need. No. You know, so your time isn't going to get sucked into something it doesn't need to. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I do think there's – and particularly, you know, we're, we're in, you know, a portion of market joy, said sarcastically right now, where <laughs> you are going to be getting lots of queries and you're going to be, yeah. you know, interacting with clients. So do, to give them something that just keeps – felt like they're kept, kept up to date, they don't need to inbound query you, will free yeah. your time up. Um, yeah, and just yeah. make it that bit more manageable. Yeah. So integrations clear, clearly play a big part for you guys. It's something that's yes. sort of a uh, that you would put as as a big tick box or a focus for you, which um, very I much, yeah. yeah, yeah. From a from a development perspective, we we cannot ignore it. We will not ignore it. Um, and, and as I mentioned, you know, we have a reasonable set of integrations already, both front end, back end, and then obviously those industry agnostic tools. We We'll continue to build out that list, but it is more, as I mentioned, a, a quality over quantity focus now. Yep. Um, because we've, you know, we've picked a couple of the big few advice tools, so we we kind of cover a lot of the market there, and um, we've got a couple of the big few at the front end and those sorts of things. So it's now sort of looking at what are the, um, the what are the tools that add a lot of value to our advisors, um, and we consider startups as well. You know, we're not just looking at the mature products. So we we see some really interesting startups that we like, and mm. we want to make sure that we're connected to those. Um, but it is also looking for us, you know, at, at the industry agnostic tools that are so commonly used that add value. So um, because we work in the revenue space, payment gateways, you know, invoicing and managing payments is, a, is becoming yeah. a bigger thing for advisors, right? It is. Um, you know, they still have plenty of platform fees and insurance commissions, but, you know, direct fee for service via invoice is happening. It's happening a lot. Mm. Now, um, you've created a, a new challenge of recovering, you know, your income, right? So how <laughs> do we make that an efficient process? Well, it makes sense, just like we have through zeros and, um, you know, uh, my obs and all the rest, you've got your little pay now button. Well, you know, you can generate invoices out of work sorted. So they want to issue an invoice and, and have the same sort of capability. So we're, and for us, that's exciting because it's really um, managing that revenue all the way yeah. through the process. You know, it can come back to the payment gateway, reconcile in our system, match off automatically in software. You know, all of those sorts of things are really cool. So yeah, we're, yeah, we're tinkering are. with some some tools in that space as well. You know, we we want to remain strong in CRM, str strong in revenue, and I think wrapped around that is just that business um, operational view. We've got a number of industry-specific tools that we are currently working with as well um, that uh, will release another integration just before the FPA conference um, and another one shortly thereafter, hopefully. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the, the sort of bits and pieces like our, um, our own portal and, and those sorts of things are definitely okay. on the short-term horizon. Yeah. Is there anything that you see for – so you've got your current users where they yep. really ninja things? You're like, wow, yeah. they've pulled something off that even you yeah. potentially didn't expect? 
So I have a great amount of joy in catching up with uh, advice firms and seeing how they're using our system. I spent uh, a Friday afternoon last week with four practices in the same network that all use Work Sorted. Um, they came to me with 18 product development improvements that they would like me to consider. <laughs> they had ranked them. They had part written specs for them. Um, and it was awesome. And uh, I got to sit there and listen to the way they used it. And, and um, things like process automation are, are really popular in our software. And, and those guys mm. use it well and they gave us a number of ideas on how we could use it better so yeah. i just the way they were doing that and the, the collaboration that they had with each other was phenomenal we have um some users that have built out incredible processes you know one of our practices is about 80 automated processes you know and the, the level of efficiency that that drives in her business not only for herself in her operational role but for her staff and even um, when new staff come in, you know, the, the uh, small amount of training that is required because they just then follow the bouncing ball in their processes yeah. is just incredible. Um, and it's yeah. not difficult to get there, um, but it is a, it's a, a journey, right? Because yeah. every business is different. I can't just take her processes and give them to your business because you don't operate that way. Um, but once you understand the capability and the potential, then, you know, the, the mind starts going up. So we um, in particular have agreed this week that um, that particular power user of process automation is going to do a master class yeah. and we're going to invite all our users to come along and see how she does that because it is quite incredible. Um, we have others that obviously use the revenue side really strong and um, are not only using it to understand their actual received revenue but their expected revenue uh, and they are able to compare and make sure that they're not uh, missing payments mm -hmm. that come mm -hmm. through. Um, but really, you know, we, I guess our, because of the, the breadth of functionality in our system, I say we're narrow, but, you know, having revenue at one end and, and workflow <laughs> on the other end means that there's quite a lot um, of, of opportunity to just do things really well. Um, yeah. We've got some that are, um, have built the most beautiful document templates in our system and we've coupled again with process automation, you know, when they issue out their, their emails automatically to their clients, God, they look good, you know, and yeah. it's just you think, man, that is a professional operation. But yeah. there is, there's just lots of little opportunities in WorkSorted to pick a bit of functionality um, and really use it well and get a great outcome out of it. Um, even our uh, questionnaires now gets used uh, in so many different ways. You know, it could be a risk profile questionnaire that they've built out, which just saves them a heap amount of time mm -hmm. when their clients come into the office um, to just general questionnaires about things that they're interested in and their lifestyle and those sorts of things so that they can have a more robust conversation with them. And again, you can automate those to go out too, right? Yeah. So um, they might yeah. do them periodically to just sort of touch bases with their clients and they can be super informal and they're just a nice way to engage. Yeah, um, absolutely. So Even yeah, um, feedback loops can be oh, when you can do that easily. That's yeah. and short. I love those. Yes. I mean, my favourite yeah. are you know, frowny face, flat face, smiley yes. face. Like yeah. you're going to get nearly everybody do doing go? that. Yeah. <laughs> that but how do we go? You know, you've yeah. just been into the office. You had a meeting. How did we go? You know, yeah. yeah. And again, we're starting to see those. That's the, the the power of that automation is that you can set it up and say, right, well, when we've completed the meeting appointment, we're going to put it into complete, and it's going to automatically send that email to them and go, hey, just checking in. You had your meeting. You know, hope it went well. Um, love a bit of feedback. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. All those sort of things. I think the more people are sort of uh, digging into the detail of our system, um, the more they're getting out of it. And, you know, we have some firms that have been with us, you know, we've still got some of our first 10 practices that uh, signed up to work sorted still on board, um, but they don't know what they don't know, right? And, and we're mm. a business that doesn't just release once a quarter or once a month. We do two releases a week. Um, so there's always going to be stuff that they'll miss. Um, yeah. So we do have that um, wonderful experience that they circle back to us, you know, five years later and they say, look, we love your system, but we're not sure if we're using it to the best of its ability. And, and we'll actually do like a practice audit and we'll yeah. have a look at how they're using our system and we'll help them get more out of it. And we'll introduce them to practices that are using it differently in different areas. I'm yeah. making another connection this afternoon with two self-licensed businesses, one here in Adelaide, um, one in Victoria that want to talk about um, staff KPI reporting and how mm -hmm. they're handling that out of work sort of. So, yeah, it's fun. And I think um, it's... It if there's one consistent theme across the interviews I've done so far, and we're, what, 15 in or something, I think, now, yeah, out nice. of the first 24 in the series, um, <laughs> is we are we are not ever using the tools we already have to their full capability. Yeah, and that's, that's right. Everything, every everything. single yeah. Excel, you name it, none yeah. of them are yeah. we using. And so, yeah. you know, what a wonderful opportunity because just using the ones you've got to their full capability doesn't cost you anymore. 
No, that's it's right. just using yeah. what you're already paying for. You yeah, know, so exactly. Yeah. It's, and, I, I yeah. love that. You know, I think that's a wonderful opportunity. Look, I'm all for upgrading your systems and looking at alternatives. Don't get me wrong. Mm. In fact, I'm probably too far that way, if anything. But <laughs> hence why I'm hosting yeah. this. But yeah. um, I do think there's so much opportunity for each of us just to squeeze out that extra bit of, of value and impact out of the tools we're already using. That's right. Yeah. And if it's just a quick little educational session and then you get stuck yeah. into it and you can do it, that's, you know, that's even better. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. Our job as software providers is to just make sure that it is simple and intuitive to use and that you can get in and do these things. You know, yeah. I don't want to build an economy of consultants that help you use work sorted. I want no. you to be able to do it for yourself. Um, Absolutely. You know, and, and Absolutely. So that's, yeah, we're quite proud of that. But yeah, look, when we can get involved and, and help them, um, you know, we're more than happy to do that too. Perfect. Yeah. So you've mentioned a couple of things that are on the development path coming up, yes. which is great. Yep. Yep. Is there anything that bit further out that's a bit of a wish list thing like, oh, I'd love us to get to this point, you know, oh, that you're like, Ooh. Look, Yeah, we've we've got a couple of um, – uh, I'll try not to give away too much of the secret stuff that's going on, but <laughs> we, um, we, we, de- we build a development pipeline that will, that will sort of extend for our 12-month period, so for our financial year, but we intentionally leave – um, enough fat in those sort of later quarters because things do change, right? And we've got yeah. to react to, you know, we'll wait and see what comes out of the quality advice review, right? So those mm-hmm. sorts of things may mean some um, some items get pulled up or down the list and, and we yep. change priorities. So we do remain quite flexible, but there are some cool bits of functionality uh, on the horizons that we'd like to get to uh, around uh, integrating our product further with things like voice, voice to IP VoIP. So yep. being able to um, connect and, and make from, the call from work sorted. Yeah. Perfect. Save the audio. No, cause we've, we've seen more and more of, you know, the Zoom conversations going on and, and instead of PDFs getting saved into our system, it's, yeah, it's MP4 files, right? It's right. the video files are getting saved yep. in there. And so absolutely, you know, we've acknowledged that and gone, well, we can, we can work more closely with these providers. Again, we don't have to be the video tool, but we can connect with best of breed tools in that space yep. so that you can make your calls, you know, have your videos, save them as notes, audio notes, video notes, have them transcribed and, and have a bit of a richer connection there with, with your right. CRM. So that's certainly something that we'd really like to get to. Um, we've been tinkering with the phone app ourselves, um, mm-hmm. but more for the practice rather than for the clients. Yes. Um, in the sense that advisors, again, when they're out on the road or uh, getting back out on the road, you mm-hmm. know, they still want to be able to look up a client, find their address, find their phone number, save a file note, audio note, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Kick off a job, see where a job's at. You know, just some of those sort of basic functions. They're, they're not running drill down reports on their revenue from their phone, but, no. you know, just some basic capabilities, you yeah. know, interactivity with our system. So, yeah, they, they're not pressingly urgent for us. They, they'd be really nice to have. Um, and, and certainly, um, you know, we can see the value in them. Mm-hmm. Um, they just sort of, they sit a little bit further on the horizon. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All of those sound pretty exciting. I, yeah. Is there anything else we've missed about the system that's a particular? Oh, um, no, look, I think we've, we've, we've done a pretty good job of covering it. Um, you know, I think we will continue to stay true to our, our you know, our um, segment, if you like, of the industry, yep. um, double down and just do what we do really well and make sure that we are adding as much value in that space as we can. We'll connect with the right tools to make sure that businesses can build their end-to-end stack. I, 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 again, not my favorite words, but whatever the advice firm considers to be their end-to-end um, mm-hmm. is what we want to help be part of uh, and make sure that we're facilitating as much of that efficiency as possible um, Yeah, and connecting with those tools, be it you know industry-specific or agnostic. Oh, I love those words. <laughs> Agnostic. Oh, yeah. so exciting. <laughs> All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Work Sorted, then the website link is in the episode show notes. We've also popped in Simon's LinkedIn uh, details, so that Excellent. feel free to nudge him, and yes. I'm sure he'll either respond or point you in the direction of the appropriate person um, who to. should Absolutely. respond. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Simon. I love that work sort of is sort of one of the tools and there's more coming, I know, but one of the tools in the industry that really sees the value in actual integrations, not yeah. monster integrations that are yeah. crazy and clunky and sort of, you know, are excluded from people like us that are a small business. The more we can make all of this accessible to anybody yeah. in the industry and they can yeah. build whatever they like, it's just down to our imaginations then, you know, Absolutely. and how exciting is that yeah. in terms of the offer you can build and yeah. the clients you can serve. So please yeah. keep that up. I uh, can't yeah. wait to see where it goes in the future. Will do. Thanks for having me along. It's been great. You're welcome. So 
Are you a current user of WorkSorted? Maybe you've given it a try, you've got some feedback or some insights. Maybe you completely agree with everything we just covered or maybe have some different experiences. No matter what they are, please share your insights on the XY community platform as we'd all love to hear your take and any further tips you might have, you know, to give other advisors or practices um, that it may be considering take checking out WorkSorted. And in terms of sort of my thoughts, look, if you haven't come across Zapier before, uh, I would really encourage you to put aside just a little bit of time to watch a few YouTube videos on it. Um, you know, Zapier can be your own little connector for the re- repetitive little tasks that you and your team are doing, and it can really streamline things and make life just that bit easier, right? These are these 1% things that we're going to find hundreds of um, to just change our worlds and the way we do things. The key thing to understand is that Zapier has just two key elements, the trigger and the action. Now, the trigger is something that happens in one system, right? And the action is the thing that you want to occur in another system when that trigger is tripped, right? So it can connect Excel to Word Gmail to Google Sheets, you know, anything, a trigger in one can cause an action in another. Um, and it is truly as big or as beneficial as your own imagination. If you do a write a list of all of the tools you use and then check them on Zapier to see whether they're there, right, you've got your main list. Then just copy it, copy and paste it to the right. And I want you to just draw random lines from apps on the left to the right and see if any of those are like, ooh, that connector could really make a difference for us. Now, when you become a real ninja at this, then you can actually have automation within a system. So an Excel trigger could cause an Excel action. This might be something you otherwise can't do in a system, that you can't tell something within it to cause something else to happen, but um, it's really powerful. So I would encourage you just to start checking it out. You don't have to use it yet. Just start to get a feel for it because more and more of the tools in our world are going to be um, on the list for things like Zapier, and it's going to really help us streamline our offerings. Now, as you know, (laughs) there is only one skill we need to become bionic advisors, and it's avid curiosity. And so to help you build that habit, today's Curiosity Corner app that sort of caught my eye is Up Content. Now, you can find Up Content at upcontent.com. And they describe it as a way to discover, collaborate, and distribute relevant third-party content that'll help you turn leads into loyal customers. Now, basically, this is all about finding content that uniquely suits your niche and then easily distributing it using integrations with social scheduling tools and newsletter tools like, say, MailChimp. Um, It even has the ability to add a call to action to the content that you're create, curating for your audience. So I just want to be really clear what I'm saying there. It can be somebody else's article that you're basically sharing with your audience, but you could add your own call to action at the end of that article, right? And that can be interesting. You don't need to write your, all of your own content. You can curate great stuff that's already out there. This could be perfect if you're working on a new niche and you really want your content to pop, but maybe you just don't have that ability or even interest in sort of writing it all from scratch. So I'd encourage you to check it out. And as always, please reach out if you if you enjoy it or you find it really valuable because I'd love to hear about it. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. Now, lots of us are really keen to focus on a new niche, like I just mentioned, or perhaps you know, refine our niche even further just to ensure our messaging and offer really resonate with them. But the challenge is then working through what changes we need to make to both our processes and our systems to best deliver that offering. So if you are keen to build a niche that loves what you do and will pay you for it, and then have a plan to scale up your business so that you even love looking after them because it's so streamlined and effective, then 
Be sure to join Jenny Pierce and I for our Niche Down and Scale Up Masterclass. The first will be held in Sydney in early 2023, but we're getting loads of interest in nationwide locations. So please reach out if you're interested at LinkedIn Peter MD. That's P E I T A M D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. Oh, <laughs> oh,